Training should never be the goal in and of itself. We want to convey competencies to our people. And with that goal in mind, let's check how we can make work instructions more effective and really make sure that we get the competencies across without wasting any time or effort. Hello, I'm Tom. Welcome to my channel where we talk about continuous improvement in an industrial setting. And this will be the second video on how to make work instructions more effective. And in fact, this video will be about the instructions themselves. What form do we give them? What are the advantages, disadvantages of specific elements within our instructions? So let's dive in. Immediately, the first thing is that work instructions will, even if they are very visual, be largely based on text still. And text is an important part. So we can also have bullets, checklists, and to have the steps in there, but text will be sometimes fully our instruction, but uh, still a big part of our instructions. Then pictures uh, that show specific details, components, or that make things visual. Of course, we can also go for video. You are watching one right now, and it's also sort of an instruction. And graphs, tables, so dense information packages. They all have an important place within our work instructions. And let's start with text, because um, what a text does, and uh, it is really, it is the basis of our document, is that it gives the, the structure. And also within the text, we get the bulk of our explanation. So structure, and explanation. Structure and explanation are mainly done within the text. And that is an important part of why we do still want to keep text in there. Because even, and you can you can already see it a bit in the picture I drew. I drew a, a minimal text type of picture, but still also here, there is a little bit of numbers and text. What we do is we always explain the visuals because the visual will link to something. It will put a picture in our brain that will make sure that it is easier for us when doing the instruction to also picture how it will be in, uh, in, in practice. So how the process will look like, behave when we are doing it. Uh, it can really focus on where we need to put the attention. And because of that, a picture will more easily give us an overview. and can also be used a lot better than text for when we want to convey spatial or visual type of information. So when we want to indicate the place of a specific task or a specific part where it should be on a line, a picture is so much easier than using text because to indicate locations with text, it's almost impossible. Uh, and also it will create more a focused overview. So again, in this, you see that there is a limited use of color. There is this special call-out box that points to where we need to focus our information, where we need to focus our attention. And there is just the minimum amount of key information in the picture. Now, when you would use such a picture in your work instruction, you will most likely also have text around it, again, summarizing even what is in the picture. But the big advantage here is that it creates the overview. And for many situations also, when you want to point at some place in space, so the location or how things fit together, ideal with pictures. And you can also check my uh, Lego instruction game where you really see that uh, for something, building something as visual as uh, a Lego building, it is a lot easier if you just place the bricks on a picture and then when you describe the same process with words, it's, that is a, uh, an example of something that is horrible to explain with words. Uh, sort of linked to a picture is the moving picture, so the video. Um, immediately a thing, a video is very difficult to edit afterwards, so they also have a big disadvantage. But what we use video for is if within your spatial, you also have timing issues. So their timing is a really important thing. And it's also pretty personal. So uh, I actually assume that when you do a training, 
that you have your text and your pictures, but there is also a live trainer. So if you do a, a workplace instruction, that there is an experienced operator who can train people, who will take a new person along and trains them using the text and the pictures in the instruction as a basis. But one of the big advantages also of video is you can sort of include this personal trainer in the training material and it gives a completely different interaction. So like you are now watching this video with me in it talking gives a completely different way of um, receiving the information than when I would have typed out exactly the same information and you would ha have to read it yourself and interpret what it says. Now, of course, you still cannot ask me direct questions, although if you have a question, put it in the comments below and I will get back to it in text. But that is a very big advantage of video. And the other thing, timing, what I mean is, um, well, you see it also in this video that I add stuff that wasn't here at the start of the video with, um, with a printed instruction. This is very difficult to do, or you have to copy the overview the whole time. And within a live presentation or within a video, this is uh, a lot easier to do, so the timing of the instruction. But more importantly, is that when the task itself is time sensitive, when you have to um, do things in a certain order and with a certain uh, tact or a certain timing in it, these things are very nice to put into a video. Uh, one of the examples here, for instance, that you will have in a lot of factories is uh, how, to, how to dress for the production area. So especially when we're in food, pharma or other factories where uh, you have a, a bit higher hygiene levels, you will be required to change uh, into a hygiene set of clothes, wash your hands. Uh, so there is always an order in how to do this, how to make yourself ready to go into the production area. Ideal for a video because there uh, it, is, it is quite visual. Where do you have to put it on your body? What do you have to do? It's nice that there is a person in there to, just to make it more palatable as a way of instruction, but also the timing there can be really well explained. And also with how can you get into the production facility, um, there is not so much of a disadvantage for video because this doesn't change as much. So if we refer back to the previous training, when we have the level one and two, so getting into the area and training a person to be safe within your production area, really nice video stuff. But the rest is neat. Well, knowledge like this that doesn't really change or uh, when it's just part of a lot of small learning points. Good things for video. And then when we go to information dense things like graphs, tables, uh, they are mainly used for reference. So you have a lot of information and they can be used as reference. And this is also the role that they should have in your instruction. They are not an explanation. They will give maybe a little bit of structure, but do that with a more visual idea. They should not give an explanation. You explain how to use information, how to do a process and make choices with your text or with the timing, the video, the critical parts, but then you can include additional information. So you fully explain one type of setup and then in the table, you also put a number of values for different setups that use the basic way of working, uh, the same as the one you are explaining, but you need to tighten the screw a different way, put some different parameters in your machine, then tables are wonderful. And the big advantage of a table is that afterwards, when people know that the table is in an instruction or at a specific place, they can easily reference back to it. So the main thing you train in an instruction where you include a lot of information in a table type of way is to train your people, to train your operators to find that table again and refer back to it when they need it. Or what you can also do is to put the table uh, or the graph at the operator workplace and use the training, your instruction document to train them once thoroughly on how to use that table that is just hanging there at their place of work. But do not use it for the actual explanation. And the one thing 
that I think we should add to all of this is your goal is to convey competencies to people in your factory, not to limit the time you spend on an instruction. If you are making an instruction for, let's say, 50 people, and by putting in four hours of extra work to make some nice pictures or even to shoot video a couple of times a year because you have to update it, if that can make sure that this 50 minutes training for your 50 people is effective and not wasted time, then of course you have gained a lot of time for your operation. So think about that, put in the effort to make a good instruction because your goal is to make people follow a standard so that your product is good, so that you can make lots of money by selling good stuff to your clients. Now, if you liked this explanation, don't forget to hit that like button, subscribe to my channel if you haven't done so already. And please tell me, is there a place for video in your instructions to your people? What would you rather put in a video than on text if you are going to do your next instruction? Drop a comment below. For now, I wish you the best of luck with creating good and effective instructions. And as always, enjoy the journey.